Let's talk about language partners. Hello, what's up YouTube? My name is Dan, welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, I like to talk about the polyglot journey, digital communication, and anything related. So tonight's topic is language partners. I got three talking points. First one, expectations. Second one, commitment. And lastly, longevity. All right, we're gonna hit those talking points. But before I get right into it, let's talk about language partners. I'm sure most of us, when we want to speak other languages, when we want, when we have curiosity about being able to get conversational, one of the first things that we think about is who will I practice with? Who will I talk to? And then from there, we quickly think about the concept of the language partner. And that's very important because when it comes to languages, we use them mainly with other people, anyone. Maybe they could be native, maybe not, but another person that's also on their polyglot journey. So we come across these people and now thanks to technology, thanks to communities and apps, we have access to getting in touch with these people that can help us and also we help them with our language journey with our polyglot journey all right let's jump right into that first talking point expectations now when it comes to dealing with other people when it comes to relationships whether it's a friendship a romantic relationship even a family relationship there's two different people that either have the same objective or they're working towards something and it's really important to match expectations now let's take it to languages so you want to practice your Spanish, you want to practice your French. There are people that are speaking French as well. Maybe they want to practice their English or whatever your native language is. So what do we do? We meet up and we talk to each other. And then from there, it's very common to really not talk about expectations. I guess that's, that's just, that's a human thing to do. But here, let's take a minute to talk about those expectations. So expectations come in the form of, so what can we do to help each other? How often will we talk to each other about the languages? Uh, we can also think about, hmm, how personal do we get with each other? That's actually a very important thing. If you guys remember, back in the, back in the old days, there was the concept of the pen pal. We would write letters to people in other countries and they would write us back. And from there, that concept mainly we're talking about people that pretty much shared their lives with each other. So yes, the personal aspect is very important. With technology and with us being able to message lots of people, maybe the personal aspect has become diluted in a sense, but still, if we're gonna have human conversations, personal aspect has to be a part of it. Something that we should get very clear with the people that we want to practice languages with, because there's a lot of people that might not want to get so personal. Maybe you might not want to get so personal. Maybe you want to get personal, but the other person does not. I feel that if we were, if we match those expectations up front, or maybe actually it's best up front because normally two people meet and they just start talking and talking and talking and things just kind of just get carried away in a sense. And no, I don't mean that things will go turn for the bad. I just mean that things without any structure, without any expectations, kind of just go as they normally would. And as we're gonna talk about in the next two talking points, we'll see where that leads us to. Second talking point, commitment. Now that can mean in the form of maybe we talk to each other once a week, maybe twice a week. The level of commitment. Uh, if I respond to you, how quickly will you respond back? This is something that is tied to expectations but as we continue, as we have the days and the weeks pass by, we start to get a sense for how committed a person is. For example, if you and your language partner set a goal saying, you know what, we're gonna to read to each other every Tuesday, or maybe not every Tuesday, but we're gonna read something to each other. Will the other person follow through with that? Would you send your audio reading and will the other person respond? Things like that. And of course, as we can probably guess, Commitment is very high at first. In the very moment when you first start talking to someone, yes, 
I want to practice my Spanish. Yes, I want to improve my English. I want to work on my Portuguese. In that moment, the commitment level, the excitement is very high. But what happens the day after that? What happens the week after that? Great segue into the third talking point, longevity. Longevity. Now, as time goes on, as we get older, we start to see that many of the people that we associate with, they kind of just come into our lives and then later they go. This especially happens with our childhood friends. It happens with even our work friends, right? How many of us have had really good friendships when we work somewhere and then we switch jobs, we move to another city? What happens to those friendships? You tell me. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we all can agree on what happens. As we keep moving, people just come and go. Language partners, well, I'm pretty sure most of us have heard stories about people that meet on the internet for practicing languages, they develop a great friendship, and they keep in touch. And hey, sometimes maybe even a romantic relationship can develop. However, I say that for the most part, people that we come in contact with, especially in language learning apps, especially in communities, it's just kind of like for the moment. And yes, of course, Everything that I'm saying here, everything that everyone says is from their own perspective. My own perspective, which does come from my own experiences. Or what I draw from my experiences from observing others and observing myself. And yes, I'll go ahead and say in my case, most of the language learning partners that I've met in my journey, in my path, they come and they go. We hardly ever keep in touch. Maybe there's a few that I can count barely in a hand that we do keep in touch, that we continue practicing, that we continue bouncing ideas off each other. So these are things that we should consider because if once again, as we, as we talked about in the Your Polyglot Journey video, understand your own journey because other people, they have other people, they're on their own journey. They have their own path. They have languages that they're interested in, in the moment and in the long term, maybe Y'all coincide on some of those, maybe you don't. And that's okay. Because for however long, for however committed they are, when y'all spend that time together, the idea is that you guys learn from each other. And I think it's beautiful. And I hope that all of us are able to leverage the technology that we have right now. We're able to leverage our own communication skills to be able to make the most out of language partners. All right? So Thank you. This is the monologue for today. YouTube, you guys are awesome. Once again, we're right here on the Twitch stream. So we're here on Twitch. I take about an I take about an hour, sometimes more, to do retro gaming and talking. This time I did some Duolingo. What I like to call this is game and chat, where I'm doing an activity, whether I'm playing Duolingo or playing a retro game and having live conversation. So check out the link in the description. For the Twitch, Metadan, same as Twitch and YouTube. All right. Thank you all for stopping by. Catch you guys on the next one. Cheers. Yo, Twitch, I'm back. Let's go ahead and switch those screens over. Where are you at? I'm still working on the sound things. Let me just go ahead and... Go.